Welcome to another Tech Tips Tuesday. It's a cold winter evening and the snow's coming down outside, so what a perfect evening to head on down to the lab and work on a nice warm piece of vacuum tube equipment. We're going to be taking a look at the chassis out of the radio that you see in this picture here. And what I'm going to be doing is giving you some servicing and troubleshooting tips to help make your next repair or restoration just a little bit faster. So let's get right into the video. The first tip in this episode is how to properly remove a Loctal type tube from its tube socket. Now this isn't to be confused with the Octal type tube. This is an Octal type tube or the base design is actually when they say Octal, it's they're referring to the base. But this is what an octal base looks like here with its index pin in the center. And these don't lock into place. This is typical for a 6V6 or 6L6 or, you know, like tube. All right, again, these just fit into the socket, but no locking. The loctal type tube actually locks into the socket so it won't come out in a high vibration atmosphere like an automobile radio or a military application way back in the day. In order to get these out of the tube sockets, there is a special procedure, and if you don't follow that procedure, you can damage the tube or the actual socket. Now, you'll notice that on the metal base of the tube here, there's a little dimple right here, and there's a little dimple right here. In order to properly remove these tubes, all you do is you bend the tube in the direction of the dimple gently while pulling up, and then bend in the exact opposite direction of the dimple, and they just pop right out. You see the dimple here? You see the base of the tube, it looks much like an octal tube, but the pins are quite a bit smaller. And you can see in the actual index pin how it locks in right here. If you listen, you'll hear it snap into place. And you can see how well it's held into its tube socket. You can lift the whole radio chassis up. So again, all you do is you bend the tube in the direction of the dimple while pulling up, and then in the opposite direction, and then they just pop right out. And that's how you properly remove a Loctal type vacuum tube. This is the underside of the Philco radio chassis and it's already been recapped uh, before I even got this thing. So what I did is I just went in here and cleaned it up. Uh, there was a few wiring errors and things like that. But this here is a really good example of what you want to see after you've done a restoration job. So the very first thing you want to do when you get an old radio like this is replace all of these waxy capacitors. They all got to go. These things are all faulty. Don't bother testing them. Don't bother wasting your time with these things. If you leave any of these things behind, it's a disaster waiting to happen. Now, a lot of you probably just test these things with a capacitor meter. They'll test fine. You know, this is rated at 0.05 microfarad. It'll probably be around that. But if you put this on a different kind of tester, which is called a leakage tester, this is rated at 400 volts DC. This capacitor leaks at 6 volts. Alright, so what that means is this is turning into a resistor in the high mega ohm somewhere. And what happens when they do that, these capacitors, they pass DC voltage. They're not supposed to do that whatsoever. They're supposed to block DC and pass AC only. So when these things pass DC, because they're effectively a resistor now, it loads the next stage and causes problems. It burns out IF transformers or, or will cause tube damage. Uh, when you see red plating output tubes, like audio output tubes, these things are usually at fault or you know a bias filtering capacitor is gone or something like that. So they all got to go. No questions asked. These things are in the trash can or in a uh, plastic bin if you ever feel like down the road like you want to restuff these. And that's uh, another topic altogether, melting these things and pulling the old cap out and then putting one of these new modern ones inside of this one and hiding it in here and making it all look original. But um, uh, that's pretty overkill for a radio like this. But some people want to do that and that's absolutely fine. Uh, the only problem I ever find with that is uh, what will happen is the radio will get sold to somebody, it will take it to a repairman and they'll cut out all of the uh, restuffed capacitors because they think there's still the old wax ones inside. So you have to put a note in the chassis. I've seen that done many times. That's a pretty frustrating situation I imagine. One way to easily tell if they are the originals is they usually have really thick leads. The newer capacitors have got really small leads on them. Quite a bit thinner. So that's one way to tell if uh, you know these have been restuffed. One small way and the second way would be to do a complete test on it. But, but um, that's kind of a, a rare situation. At any rate here, so those wax capacitors have been replaced by these yellow and orange ones here. 
Now, whenever you replace these capacitors, you want to keep the value same. If it's 0 0.01 microfarad, you want to put a 0 0.01 in its place. And you also want to make sure that the voltage is the same or higher. So the voltage of the capacitors that came out of here, uh, I believe were uh, 400 volts, something like that. These have been all been replaced with 600 volt capacitors. Uh, the B plus in here is really quite low. It's in the 200 volt range when I measured it on this chassis here. So everything is uh, well within spec. But you never want to go low, lower on the voltage of any kind of capacitor. You always want to make sure that the, uh, the voltage is the same or higher. And of course the capacitance would stay the same or very close to. The electrolytic capacitors are also another very important thing to replace. Uh, if you've ever turned on an old amplifier or an old radio and you get this horrible loud hum coming out of the speaker, that's because these capacitors are open inside. Now these are replacements and the, the one that was in here I didn't even see. I imagine it was in a cardboard tube or something like that. It probably had a was a multi-cap or something like that. But uh, these were all replaced again before I even got this with these uh, 450 volt uh, 20 mic capacitors and it's absolutely fine. So you want to make sure that all the electrolytics are replaced as well because they're another component that no questions asked has to go. They have to go in these old radios because if they're not faulty they will go faulty. Another thing you want to do is always put a fuse in the line cord. I've got a small fuse right here that's in line. This is a 2 amp fuse, 125 volt small fuse and it's just soldered in line with the uh, with the with the uh, hot lead that comes in this is a reproduction cloth cord this isn't a real like the old old cloth cord this is a reproduction you can see the uh, end on it if I can get it over here you can see the the end on it newer cord so that's kind of a nice thing to do to keep things kind of original you also want to replace the uh, the capacitors on the line cord they run from the line to the chassis you want to use the appropriate safety rated capacitors there are lots of topics, and this here is a, an entire topic and an entire episode within itself, but you want to make sure that you get the uh, the proper capacitors to the chassis. Uh, one way to tell is, a lot of the times, is they are a blue color, and they need to have a special rating on them, and that rating is basically saying that they won't short, so basically the, it at no time will make the chassis hot. So these are very important, and these go across from the line to the chassis itself. So it's very important to replace those a lot. In these older receivers, they used uh, just wax capacitors to the chassis. And of course, again, you know, that'll make the, the chassis hotter. If they both short, you get quite a big bang inside of the radio. So uh, very important to also do. Now you'll notice that throughout here, you'll see these capacitors that look like dominoes. Now you don't want to replace those unless absolutely necessary. Those are capacitors that can stay and those are silver mica style capacitors. A lot of these capacitors have been hand graded at the factory, so if you change these, the dial of the radio will not track correctly, or your shortwave band will not tra track correctly. And when I say that, I mean if you tune the radio uh, to 600 AM and you align it at that point, and then you move the dial up to 1.5 megahertz or 1500 kilohertz AM, it'll align at both those points, but right in the center, what'll happen is it will be off. So say at a thousand or around uh, one megahertz or uh, you know a thousand kilohertz, however you want to look at that, uh, the needle won't be where it's supposed to be. And that really is tracking and that's caused by these capacitors here. So uh, if you're uncomfortable with the capacitors and your radio does work, very carefully clip one end of the capacitor, put a capacitor meter across the capacitor that you're testing and very closely match its value with the similar silver mica capacitor and you should be okay. Sometimes it'll take one or two capacitors in order to get the value exact because uh, 15 picofarad might be 18.5 or say 14.6 or something like that. So you really don't know and you need to test them. So uh, again, a lot of those have been handpicked at the factory to make the dial go, uh, you know, to line up properly or as close as they can anyways. So if you can, leave the silver mica dominoes alone if you can. If there's any of them bad, of course you have no choice, but um, I rarely ever see these domino style capacitors fail. All right, I'm gonna go grab a resistor here and uh, we'll talk a little bit about the different styles of resistors. During the restoration of a receiver, it's always good to go through and check all the resistors to make sure that they haven't moved too far off value. Now, one of the big troublemakers that I find in a lot of these older receivers are the rounded body style resistors. Now, you'll see that I've got this newer Allen Bradley style. It's kind of got sharp edges on it. 
and you'll see the one above it's got rounded edges on it. I will focus on that a little bit. So these ones with the rounded edges, or the, I call them roundies, whenever you find one of these roundies, doesn't matter what size, if it's a half watt, one watt, two watt, whatever, you always want to check these out. I find that the failure rate of this particular style of resistor is much, much higher than this newer Allen Bradley style. So always check these. Of course you want to check all the resistors, but these ones here are definitely suspect. So keep an eye out for the roundies and always, always check them. The last thing you're going to do before you put your radio back in its case is do the RF and IF alignment. And that means that you don't really want to tamper with anything on the underside of the receiver after you've done that. So you got to make sure that you're all done with your work in there. So if you say move any of these wires, say you didn't like the way that the wires were, you know, in here and you wanted to move them, make them a little bit flat. If you did that after you had done your RF alignment, you'll throw your RF alignment right off. Just because between the wires there's a capacitance and if you move the wires a little closer together, that changes the capacitance, which in turn changes your alignment. So that's something to always be leery of. Always clean everything and clean everything up. May, you know, have your wires put the way you want it to. Say if you want this wire here to not sit like that and you want it to say sit up here like this, don't go doing that after you do your alignment. All right. So make sure that all the wires are sitting nice and uniform just the way that you want them and then go in and do your RF and IF alignment. You should have no problems. Some receivers will require the bottom metal cover to be on during the RF alignment. If you have the, the metal cover off of the bottom of the receiver, you do the alignment and then put the metal cover on, you'll find that your dial accuracy will just go right out into outer space. And that's because the, uh, the bottom cover is uh, changing the inductance of some of the coils or it's coupling to some of the circuits. So the bottom metal cover will sometimes need to be installed. Usually you will know that because they'll have holes stamped in the bottom that you can slip your insulated tuning tool through in order to do the adjustments with the cover on. Uh, a really good contact cleaner that I use is this super contact cleaner, the one with the gold band, and it's made by MG Chemicals. Uh, this is just a, the stuff that I prefer. It works very, very well. I tried Deoxid as well. It works very, very good, but um, for some reason I keep going back to this stuff here. So uh, I, you see I've bent the little pipe a little bit so I can get into some tighter areas. It has a flow valve on the top here where you can change it to medium or high. But uh, even when it's on low, it's like a fire hose, so I just leave it on low. And uh, that uh, super contact cleaner works very, very well. And um, usually what you do is you just hose down the switch and then move the switch a whole bunch of times and then hose down the switch again and then move it a whole bunch of times. And it's usually pretty good. After you've done that, you want to put a little bit of oil on the shafts because a lot of the times that'll wash the oil or the grease out of the, uh, the small bearing surfaces here. So you want to make sure that, um, you know, you put a little drop of... of uh, so, you know, light engine oil or something on the shaft just so that it uh, things move smoothly again. When you're doing it with potentiometers, you want to find a hole in the case that will allow you to get to the carbon track within the potentiometer. Here's a little hole right here. And that's how I got into inside this one. Everything else is sealed, so I just hose it down inside there and move it around and hose it down a little bit more. And then usually I'll put a piece of cloth in the bottom of the chassis because it'll all run down and it'll pool in the bottom here. Just put a little cloth here to soak it up and then in the end I just you know dab everything and make sure that it's nice and clean and eventually it just uh, you know kind of evaporates and goes away. So both of these potentiometers have these little holes in there that you can get a bit of contact cleaner and that really is quite handy. I've had many people ask me in the past if they can use their older oscilloscope to align their receiver with and the answer is yes of course you can. Uh, it's a little bit more tricky than using a modern oscilloscope because these older oscilloscopes are really bandwidth limited. But uh, there is many ways that you can do much of the alignment with the oscilloscope, a small older signal generator, and just a vacuum tube voltmeter. And one day I'll just dedicate an entire episode to uh, using older test gear from say the 50s to do an entire radio alignment with. Thanks for stopping by Tech Tips Tuesday. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. There'll be many more videos just like this in the very near future. So from Mr. Carlson's lab to your family, I wish you a very happy new year and a very prosperous 2016. So until the next video, bye for now.